one plus two plus three plus four mm-hmm. plus five plus six and so on does it make any sense the sum I mean, you, you probably heard about this one mm-hmm. it became uh, very uh, popular at some point one plus two plus three i did a, i did a video for number file mm-hmm. the, the youtube channel about it maybe 10 years ago so one plus two plus three plus four plus five ostensibly uh diverges goes to infinity because you get a bigger and bigger number mm-hmm. and yet there is a way to make sense of it in which it this, it comes up to minus one over 12. how fascinating first of all the answer is not even a positive number and it's not an integer it's not a whole number it's minus one over 12. so sometimes people ask me what is your favorite number and it's a kind of a joke i say minus one over 12. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually 42. <laughs> 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 so your favorite number is not an order set. Uh, right. So what else? What else? Uh, so Langlands so, program, of course. I have to mention that. And we'll we'll explore that in depth. Do you want do you want to know what Eric said? Sure. Sphere aversion, boys surface, hop vibration. Co vibration, okay. And pi one of SO3. Okay. Oh yes. So that's the that's the famous cup trick, you know? Okay, look. So this is how it works. <laughs> no, <laughs> no tricks. tricks. No tricks. <laughs> no magic. It's honest. It, it is magical, okay? But yeah. not, <laughs> not because I'm tricking you. So you start with a, a bottle like this or a cup, and you start twisting it. And at the same time, you twist your, your arm. Mm-hmm. And then you come. So this is actually going to um, rotate at 360 degrees, a full turn. Then you say, okay, I'm going... I won't be able to do another turn because then my arm would really get twisted. I'll have to go see a doctor. Yes. Yet, if I do it second time, it untwists. This is the by one of SO3 mm-hmm. Eric is talking about. Yes. So there is something where the first motion is not trivial, but if you double down on it, mm-hmm. you come back to the initial position. It's very co- closely connected to the fact that we have elementary particles of two types, bosons and fermions. So bosons are, for example, photons or carriers of other forces, or the Higgs boson. It is called a boson for a reason, because it is a boson. Uh, in, in honor of uh, Indian mathematician Bose, B-O-S-E, and Einstein. So these particles obey what's called Bose-Einstein statistics. But then there are other particles called fermions in honor of Enrico Fermi, Italian-born mathematician who worked in, in the U.S. and um, and they follow what's called Dirac Fermi statistics. And those are electrons and constituents of matter, electrons, protons, neutrons, and so on. And they have a certain duplicity, if you will. And that duplicity is rooted mathematically in this in this experiment, this little experiment that they have just done. So I can I imagine, speaking of imagination, okay? Yeah. So I'm just kind of riffing on this. Imagine a world in which this will not be shocking or like. In this case, it's not even shocking because I haven't really explained the details because I can't do it in two minutes. I, I indicated what this is all about and so on. But imagine a world in which this is not foreign to most people, that most people have seen it before. or They're not afraid to approach this type of questions because you know, we, we talked a little bit about mass education, but I really believe that a lot of people in our society, and not, it is not not only in the United States, but throughout the world, a lot of people have been traumatized. It's really PTSD. That's why people, when they see mathematical formula or like even like calcu- they need to calculate tip on a bill, they it's just they're terrified because it brings up those memories when they were kids and uh, being called to blackboard and solve a problem, you can't solve a problem. An unscrupulous teacher says, you're an idiot, sit down, and you feel ashamed and, and, and you know, lowly, and that stays with you. And so I think that, unfortunately, that's where we are. But, I, but what, one can dream, and so my dream is that one day we'll be able to overcome this, and actually all of these treasures of mathematics will become widely, widely available, or at least people will know where to find them. And they will not be afraid of going there and looking. And I think this will help because, like I said, for one thing, it gives you a sense of belonging. It gives you, it kind of is an antidote to the kind of alienation and separation that we feel today, oftentimes because of ideological divide, sectarian strife, and all kinds of things like that. Because then you will, once you see there's like a critical mass of this beauty, 
that kind of like dawns on you is like, my God, this is what we all have in common.